Blessed day, beloved people of God. Welcome to the Lord reigns. Grace, peace, love, prosperity, victory, success, and divine health to everyone made available by God the Great King, who is the creator, owner, and possessor of all heaven and earth, everyone and everything in them. God, the truth. Truth is a person. It is the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus told Thomas in John 14, 6, that he is the way, the truth, and the life and no one comes to the Father except through him. But what does he mean by that? He is saying that he is the pathway to the Father through belief and acceptance of his sacrifice on the cross and following him. He is the bodily form of the Word of God and he is the example of the physical and spiritual existence that is devoted and dedicated to God. To come to the Father is to access his kingdom and have access to his throne. No one can obtain either of these privileges except by what Christ achieved on the cross. God has ordained all blessings to come to us through him. Jesus is a mediator by nature, partaking of both natures, divine and human. He is a mediator by office, by transacting matters between God and man. Christ is the true God and eternal life. As a prophet, he teaches the ways of God in truth. As a priest, he is faithful, merciful, and true. As a king, he is just and true in all his ways and administrations. He is the substance and sum of all the truths which are the gospel. And he is the truth of all the types, shadows, prophecies, and promises of the Old Testament. By him, grace and truth came, putting an end to the law of Moses. The definition for the word truth is God. That's because truth is one of the qualities of his nature and because all truth proceeds from him in everything he thinks, says, and does. He is free of falsehood, lies, deception, and every word that is opposite of the word truth. He is always straightforward. He is always honest and sincere. His truth is immutable, which means it is unalterable. It is impossible for God to lie. He is truthful to everyone, everywhere, all the time. He is the absolute truth and we can rely and depend on him to never change. God abounds in goodness and truth. He is the God of truth without injustice. All his paths are mercy and truth. All his work is done in truth. His truth continually preserves us. He desires truth in our inward parts 
our hearts, minds, souls, and spirits. His truth is our shield and buckler. He is abundant in mercy and truth, and we give him glory because of his mercy and truth. His entire word is true, and he has magnified it above his name. The Lord is near to everyone that calls on him in truth. His truth endures forever to all generations. Praise God for his truth. And now, O oh Lord God, you are God, and your words are true, and you have promised goodness to us. Every word of God is pure and proves true. He is a shield to those who put their trust in him. For the word of the Lord is right, and all his work is done in truth. The entirety of your word is truth, and every one of your righteous judgments endures forever. Your word is the authority in heaven and earth. It does not fail. It does not return void, but accomplishes that for which you sent it. For you watch over your word to perform it. In the beginning was the word, who is truth, and the truth was with God, and the truth was God. He was in the beginning being present originally with God, and all things were made through him. Without him was not anything made that was made. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory the glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth, in hope of eternal life, which God, who never lies, promised before the ages began. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him, who is the truth, should not perish, but have everlasting life. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding, so that we may know Him who is true. And we are in Him who is true, in His Son Jesus Christ. He is the true God and the eternal life. And this is eternal life, that they know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom He sent. For it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of truth which proceeds from the mouth of God. For Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. We who abide in the teaching of Christ have both the Father and the Son, for behold, he delights in truth, in the inward being, and he teaches us wisdom in the secret heart. Because his people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge of the truth. Knowing this first of all, that no prophecy of scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. For all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Therefore, let us do our best to present ourselves to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, correctly handling and expounding upon the word of truth. We have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness or handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. For God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. God is spirit, and those who worship him must not worship him in vain, 
teaching as doctrines the commandments of men, but in spirit and truth, for his word is spirit and it is truth. The words of truth that we speak are spirit and they are life, for it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. But the Holy Spirit distinctly and expressly declares that in latter times some will turn away from the faith, giving attention to deluding and seducing spirits and doctrines that demons teach, through the hypocrisy and pretensions of liars whose consciences are seared, who forbid people to marry, to abstain from certain kinds of foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and have an increasingly clear knowledge of the truth. For everything God has created is good, and nothing is to be thrown away or refused, if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and by prayer. If you lay all these instructions before the brethren, you will be a worthy steward and a good minister of Christ, ever nourishing your own self on the truths of the faith and of the good instruction which you have closely followed. Refuse and avoid irreverent legends, profane and impure and godless fictions, mere folks' tales and silly myths, and express your disapproval of them. Train yourself toward godliness, keeping yourself spiritually fit. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. And every plant that our Heavenly Father has not planted will be rooted up. But of His own will He brought us forth by the word of truth. That is the incorruptible seed that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. For God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. These are the words of the amen, the trusty and faithful and true witness, the origin and beginning, the author of God's creation. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. In him we also, when we heard the word of truth, the gospel of our salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire the possession of it to the praise of his glory. And Jesus said, When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide us into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to us the things that are to come. Lead us in your truth and teach us, for you are the God of our salvation. And God is not a man that he should lie, or a son of man that he should change his mind. Has he said, and will he not do it? Or has he spoken, and will he not fulfill it? For what if some did not believe? Will their unbelief make the faithfulness of God and his word without effect? Certainly not. Indeed, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that you may be justified in your words and may overcome when you are judged. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven true. He is a shield to all who trust in him. 
His righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and his law is truth. And Christ did not come to abolish the law or the prophets, but to fulfill them. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Christ Jesus. For this purpose he was born and for this purpose he came into the world. That is to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to his voice. For we tell you that Christ became a servant to the circumcised to show God's truthfulness in order to confirm the promises given to the patriarchs. And scripture cannot be broken. For when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessing I will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply you. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men indeed swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is for them an end of all dispute. Thus God, determining to show more abundantly to the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters the presence behind the veil, where the forerunner has entered for us, even Jesus, having become high priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. O sons and daughters of God, guard what was committed to your trust, avoiding the profane and idle babblings and contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge. Stand therefore having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. For we destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of us speak truth with our neighbor, for we are members one of another, and speaking the truth in love, which rejoices in the truth. We are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ who is the truth and the rock, upon whom God has built his church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. His work is perfect, for all his ways are justice. A God of faithfulness and without iniquity, just and upright is he. Yes, these are the things that we shall do. Speak the truth to one another. Render in our gates judgments that are true and make for peace. For lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. No lie is of the truth. But those who act faithfully are his delight. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing we may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. And having purified our souls by our obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart. Since we have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers, and the flower falls. But the word, the truth of the Lord, remains forever. And this word is the good news that was preached to us. And he has sanctified us in the truth. His word, Jesus Christ, the truth, 
which effectively works in us who believe. Thank you for listening. We trust you were encouraged, strengthened, and filled with hope. We love you, and until next time, remember, the Lord reigns with love for all.